Good morning, I'm Dr. Edward Espinoza. I'm a board certified internal medicine physician in Atlanta, Georgia. I wanted to take a few minutes to explain the concept of COVID-19 serology testing. Today's discussion doesn't include other clinical ways of evaluating patients that we suspect of having COVID infections, such as x-rays, physical exam, vital signs, but I did want to show you a simple graphic that summarizes the testing and evaluation that takes place uh, and how PCR testing and serology testing fits into this puzzle. So if you'll look at the um, graphic here, you'll see that there's um, You'll see that there's vital signs, uh, including temperature and pulse ox. You'll see physical exam. Uh, two of the areas that I'm gonna discuss today are this nasopharyngeal PCR testing, as well as antibody testing for IgG and IgM antibodies for COVID-19. But there's also additional testing, such as chest X-ray and CT, or CAT scans of the chest, as well as ultrasounds. Uh, these are primarily used in the inpatient setting at this time for our uh, more ill patients or patients with just more severe COVID infections. We also do a myriad of, of blood tests when we're evaluating patients that are uh, more severely ill, including CBC, comprehensive metabolic panels, inflammatory markers, liver function, uh, and really too many to list. But what I want you to, to notice is that the uh, real-time PCR nasopharyngeal swab that we're uh, currently doing, as well as the antibody test uh, for IgG and IgM uh, COVID-19 antibodies, is is just two of the uh, multiple uh, evaluation tools that we have in diagnosing and evaluating a patient for COVID-19. So COVID-19 serology test is a blood test. If you're infected with coronavirus, your body mounts an immune response to this foreign virus. The immune response includes the creation of antibodies that circulate in your bloodstream. These antibodies attack and neutralize COVID-19. So let me show you a simple graph that I've created that explains uh, PCR testing as well as antibody testing. So the way testing works is when a person is initially infected and has symptoms, we can do a nasal pharyngeal swab, the PCR test that I was talking about. The test is called a polymerase chain reaction uh, test. And what it essentially does is it multiplies the number of viral protein that the sample collects really to enhance our ability to detect the presence of the virus. And what I want you to see here is, uh, with this graph is, in the, the horizontal axis, you will see that this describes the days since infection with uh, the infection day being in the intersection between the X and the Y axis. And then in the Y axis or the uh, vertical axis, this is a measure of antibody titers. So how much uh, of the IgM or the IgG antibody titers uh, there are. And so before I get into the discussion of the antibodies uh, themselves, let me talk to you a little bit about this uh, nasopharyngeal PCR swab. The, uh, typically when somebody's infected, the uh, symptoms begin somewhere around two to three days after initial infection. And the symptoms can last 10, 14 uh, uh, days or even longer. When someone is having active symptoms, that is the time that we do a nasopharyngeal PCR swab. We are looking to identify the virus and the proteins within the virus, uh, and that is what this test does. Once the symptoms begin to fade, the sensitivity of the test lessens, so it has a more difficult time identifying true positives. And so we use this test um, to identify people who are infected with COVID-19 when they are actively having symptoms. As your body clears the infection and you become less symptomatic, the nasopharyngeal PCR test is less effective in detecting the infection and in detecting the actual viral uh, uh, proteins. And subsequently, if you're tested when your symptoms are diminishing, you may very well have uh, negative results 
uh, where you test negative because the viral PCR test is not able to identify your uh, is not able to identify the virus within your uh, secretions. As your body mounts this immune response, you begin producing IgM antibodies. And so I want to go back to the graph and show you the initial antibodies. Um, well, and let me just tell you this. We call, uh, your body mounts an immune response and it forms or creates antibodies. We also call these uh, proteins antibodies or immunoglobulins. Um, and these circulate in your bloodstream or a tissue. And we have basically about five different, we have five different classes or what we call isotopes of immunoglobulins or antibodies. And so I'm gonna talk to you about two of the five classes. So two of these, I mentioned earlier IgM and the second one is IgG. So let's talk about IgM first and you can see that in this graph. In general terms, the first type of antibodies that your body produces against COVID-19 are referred to as IgM with a capital M. IgM antibodies usually will appear within days of the initial infection. These antibodies will remain in your circulatory system, biting off the infection, and usually will fade away within weeks to months after the initial infection. And so you can see in this graph the uh, peak uh, somewhere around 14 to 18 days, and then they, the IgM antibodies begin to uh, fade away. As a rule of thumb, we can say that IgM antibodies are usually measurable around 10 to 14 days after the initial infection. Um, and so that's basically, in a nutshell, what IgM antibodies are. The second type of antibodies that I want to talk to you about are the uh, IgG antibodies, and that's a, uh, IgG with a capital G. <clears throat> um, IgG antibody production usually starts around 10 to 14 days after the initial infection. We can usually begin measuring these antibodies two to three weeks after the initial infection. And these antibodies remain in your circulation for a much longer period of time, years and sometimes for your entire life. Um, so that in general is a summary of how we measure um, antibodies for COVID-19 infection. And really to summarize is early uh, in the disease process, when someone is infected, we would use the nasal swab that, you're, uh, that you see on television uh, uh, when people are being tested right now. It's this nasal swab that measures uh, proteins, viral proteins. This test is best performed when someone is having symptoms, is, is symptomatic. As they become less symptomatic and their body or, uh, is clearing out the infection, that test becomes less useful. And so the next stage of testing becomes this IgM and IgG antibodies. And this is the next phase of testing that we will begin using uh, to determine if someone has had uh, the infection and has recovered from the infection and now has antibodies. The initial antibodies are the IgM antibodies, uh, and then subsequently your body will develop the IgG antibodies. The test that we have for antibodies currently measures both the IgG and the IgM antibody. Uh, so it will give you results uh, that are useful in understanding how, um, how long you've had this infection. Because if, for instance, you, you take the antibody test and you have only IgM antibodies, you know that you have been infected more recently than someone who tested for antibodies uh, for COVID-19 and they had only IgG antibodies. Those are the antibodies that are produced uh, a little bit further out from the initial infection, weeks uh, uh, to months. And so you know that the, it was a little bit longer time when they were infected. So I hope this gives you a little bit uh, a clearer understanding of, of the tests that we, were, we are currently using uh, in evaluating people for COVID-19 infection.